All right, guys, I figured I'd sit down with you and show you Mullet's data log from his 654 pass. This is the fastest pass any of our cars have ever made. So uh, we won FL2K's Extreme 28 class and streetcar class on this run. So I figured we'd go through the data. I've got a Holly Dominator in the car. That data logs everything, obviously. Literally every sensor on the car leaves us a data trail. So we're gonna go through this data log and just talk about some of the things, starting off with the boost. This blue line right here, this is the map sensor, manifold air pressure. On mullet, our map sensor only goes to 42 PSI, which, see right here, 42 PSI. So it's actually maxed out the entire run, which is not ideal, but you know, it happens. So what we'll do here is we'll set the zero time. So this is right when I started the run and we'll reset that really quick. So now we can see we were at over 42 pounds of boost right here, 1.9 seconds into the run. Mullet was making over 42 pounds of boost, maxing out the map sensor. I'm estimating it was making around 45 pounds of boost because if you go like this and turn on the fuel pressure, which happens to not be on here anymore, hold on. We'll take throttle off and we'll put fuel pressure, if I can find it right here. Fuel pressure rises with boost. So sometimes you can kind of glance at your fuel pressure and see where that ends up. So we'll turn on fuel pressure right there, that yellow line. So yeah, it's just slightly above it. I'm guesstimating about 45 pounds of boost. So it kind of went up with that same slope. Fuel pressure kind of always sits a little bit above it. So I would guesstimate it was around here, which will only be a couple PSI higher than where it's maxed out. And then it actually came down, the boost came down and tickled it right here. So it was at like 42-ish pounds out the back door to go 221 miles an hour. So let's get rid of that stuff. Boost, you guys have already, you've seen it. It's maxed out the whole run. Ignition timing right here. You can see the profiler tickled the traction control uh, right here in two spots. Just barely pulled a little bit of timing out. That actually could just be from some of the interference on the drive shaft sensor, but that was like microscopic amounts of timing it pulled out. Nothing, no big deal, it was instantaneous. Didn't even feel it here in the car. So let's just look at the RPM curve for a second. You can see we, we're leaving right here, 3,800 RPM. This is up on the trans brake over here on the left side. And we were making eight and a half pounds of boost on the trans brake. And then I let off the button right here car leaves, come sliding up through here. You got the one, two shift right here at 8,000 RPM. And then you got the converter. looks like it coupled right here, slides up to the two, three shift. And it cracked the two, three shift off at about 8,270 RPM. And then you can see once it's in third gear, it is just riding the converter, just Converter screaming. So the whole time it's in high gear, if you look at the RPM up here in the top left, it's over 8,000 RPM, just riding the converter. It's all the way up until this moment where the converter locks. So converter locks, and you can see the engine goes from riding the converter to skirt, freaking yanks the engine down to now direct drive. So the converter can't really flash up anymore. The converter is now fully locked and it has to match the drive shaft RPM because we're in high gear, the converter's locked. And when the converter's locked, it shouldn't be slipping at all. We should be direct drive engine to drive shaft. So you can see it lugs down the engine from like, oh, what RPM are we at? 8,000 RPM, it lugs it all the way down to 7,500 RPM. So one thing I like to think of with these lockups is the engine is at 8,000 RPM, 42 pounds of boost, making roughly 3,500 horsepower, I don't know, maybe 3,000 horsepower, somewhere in that range. 
there's two things that can happen. Either the engine RPM has to come down or the car has to accelerate. So the engine RPM did come down a little bit, which it did not want to do. It's fighting its heart out to stay, you know, up at 8,000 RPM. But the weight of mullet dragged it down. But as it did that, I mean, when you're in the car, this thing just freaking accelerates. So then you can see the converter's locked up and it's just rising perfectly with the engine RPM. Now the drive shaft speed, if you lay it over right here, drive shaft RPM, see once it's locked in, once the converter locks, the engine RPM and the drive shaft RPM are almost the exact same because the converter's locked. So that's really cool. So it looks like first gear, second gear, third gear, fourth gear almost, even though it's three speed. So fuel pressure looks really good though, the whole run, you know, we got that new fuel pump. You can see it didn't drop at all. The boost kind of tapered off once we hit our boost number that we were looking for. And then, you know, fuel pressure just stayed up there perfectly, making all the fuel pressure, making a whopping 130 PSI of fuel pressure, a lot of methanol. We did see this problem all weekend. Mullet's always done this because it's a wet sump car. See this green line? This is the oil pressure. So we kind of always have good oil pressure off the rip, you know, 90 PSI. And then as it fills the heads full of oil from all that high RPM ripping, you know, there's less oil in the pan. It kind of starts to get weird and jumpy and it's just not getting a clean oil feed. So you see the pressure kind of hop around. I mean, right here it's 92 and then it's down to 85. And then over here we got a big dip, 70 PSI and then 77 PSI out the back door. It usually drops down to 50. And that's because it's a wet sump. If it had a dry sump, we probably wouldn't have this issue, but you know, I cheaped out. So here it is. That's all we got. Duty cycle, we're running about 75% of the injector duty cycle. So we're chilling there. This is an issue. The dome pressure is like out of control. So you can see the target dome which is how much pressure is in the top of the wastegate. This is what controls your boost. The target dome is 50 PSI, but the actual dome pressure inside the wastegate right here is 60 PSI. That's not right. So that's why Mullet actually accidentally made a little more boost than we're targeting. We're targeting 50 PSI in the dome. The dome actual pressure red is 60 PSI because we have a problem with the vent on our boost controller. It's like it can't vent enough air. So the dome pressure was higher than it was targeted to be. That's not ideal, but it was ideal, if that makes sense. We are gonna fix that for World Cup. And in order to go as fast as we did at FL2K, we'll actually have to target 60 PSI. So we got the data, but obviously we don't have an ideal situation going on at the boost controller. That's one thing on our list to fix before World Cup. So that's most of the engine stuff. I think I kind of covered most of that good stuff. Yeah, so let's go over here. We got EGT data through here. You can see all these numbers on the left. Um, EGT number five has gone bad. It's gone rogue. Don't worry about that. But like, if you were to overlay all these onto each other, they're freaking dialed. So out the back door, we're making like 1300 degrees of uh, EGT temp. So exhaust gas temperature, that's chilling. No worries there. Wheelie sensor, we don't even use that anymore. This is the G meter right here, the green. So this tells you how many G forces we're pulling. You can see with the converter locks, how <laughs> it literally shakes the car. It's so intense. A lot of times you'll see the G meter just taper off, like kind of like one of these deals. But with that lockup on and this much horsepower, the G meter, I mean, it's really ripping out here, like 1.1 G just right there. That's pretty hard to do. That takes a lot of horsepower, but Mullet doesn't pull a lot of Gs. Like James car, you know, his 240 pulls more Gs than Mullet. Uh, right here, we're like 2.14 Gs right here. And that's not a ton. I've seen James cars, I think it's like 2.4, 2.5. But the thing with mullet is that it's pulling this many Gs, whatever, 2.1 Gs here, 2.15. And 
and it's holding it for a long time. So we're using horsepower to pull a little bit of G's, but for a long period of time. And that's just, of course, my take on it. I've seen like when we had the LS in it, we went at 699, it was like pew, made a ton of G's, but the engine didn't have enough horsepower to hold it for a long time. So we were able to still go at 699 before, we had to have the short track just freaking killer. Whereas with the big block, we're able to just put the power to it and it just holds that G for so long. Max G, 2.34 and more realistically like 2.24 cause there's just a little spike there that made the max go up. But like 2.24 seems to be the, the highest G we pulled. Just chilling, that's pretty amazing. And then we'll take that off, take the uh, boost off. And these other lines, this blue line is the right front shock travel. So you can see it's sailing up here, picking up the front end pretty freaking fast. And then it just tapers off nicely. So you don't want it to just slam into the limit of the shocks. It kind of tapers over, but you can see that the front end was pretty much topped out. And then we've got the rear shock travel is this red line back here. And it, it also topped out right there. So we were a little bit behind on the shock adjustments maybe, but it worked. So what do you do? It didn't, it didn't try and do anything weird. The crazy thing, the most insane thing about this whole weekend, I think is that mullet is going stupid fast and not even trying to wheelie. Like in the car, it's never felt more stable. It's like it's shoving the front end into the ground. And that's because the suspension is finally working right. That's a combined effort between Nate, Ty, and even Pete was suggesting some stuff. But back here, uh, you can see that our air fuel ratios are really nice. You know, we're running about 3.0 down the track, three to one air fuel ratio. I mean, that's pretty rich as far as I know. And then the timing is basically the same timing table that Steve Morris put in mullet when we originally tuned it. So I don't mess with that. We try to avoid that. And uh, it seems like a lot of timing to me on LS stuff, because that's what I know. But if that's what Steve wants for timing, that's what Steve gets for timing. And as far as the spark plugs look, they're good to go. So other than that, guys, that's pretty much it for Mullet's 654 at 221. Last thing we'll look at is the actual wheel speed. So you can see 222 miles an hour right there on the drive shaft speed as we rolled on out the back door. Probably as I went through the traps, it's showing like 231. I don't know if that's right. That might've just been a little spike. Let's, we'll call it 225 out the back door. So pretty amazing. That's our boy Mullet doing work. Hope you guys enjoyed this little data log look. Pretty insane.